चारे अपनालम चारे अपना अलम चारे अपनालम जब तक है दौरे आसमां सुन लिए हर पीरो जवा आवाज पर शबीर के बढ़ता रहे ये कारवा रुकने न पाए ये कदम जा रहे अपना हर कल्ब पर जाते चलो दुनिया को बतलाते रहो एक एक मुहाजे जुल्म की तस्वीर दिखलाते चलो हर दिल में भर दो शगम ऊंचा रहे अपना अलम ऊंचा रहे अपना ये पचे में बस टूटे दिलों की आस एक अब तक किसी पर चमतले जिंदा किसी की प्यास है जिसने सहेला खोस तम चारे पनालम चा रहे अपना अबास है नाम वफा आवाजो अंजाम वफा मुँह मोड़ के दरिया से जो पीता राजा में वफा होते रहे बाजू कलम ऊंचा रहे पनालम ये कर ये कर बला की दासता है जर्रा जर्रा से यहाँ हर शाम आती है बेशीर के खूँ के निशार सुबह है चश्मे नम ऊंचा रहे अपना ऊंचा ए नौजवाना ने अजा तुम हो के सी दिल की दुआ तश उठती रे सीनों से मातम की सदा कायम रहे अकबर का गम ऊंचा अपना अलम ऊंचा मोहम्मद dear brothers dear sisters dear distinguished guests Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yesterday we spoke about death and uh, we had some replies and feedbacks of uh, some brothers and sisters about the definition of death and asking why we 
somehow speaking about death without speaking about life, probably we need to have um, a definition of life. I did, don't really want to speak about life because uh, there is many things to say, but I would like to be clear that death is not the final destination. It's just a transition to another world. So there is nothing to be scared of, and it's a natural thing that every creation of God uh, needs to experience. Whenever we do the kunut during the namaz and the salat, we have something very usual during the kunut to do. It's Rabbana atina wa fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirat hasana wa qina adab al-nar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have in this world first and then the other world the year after to have good things. So even during even when the Quran speaks about death he speaks about this dunya at the same amount of um, verses speaking both of them. It means that I didn't mean that when we think about death we have to wait to death coming to us. Indeed not. We are here for a mission. We are here to build a life. We are here to live plentifully uh, the, uh, the life in this dunya. I give you an example how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam used to. Uh, excuse me, if you, if you can just. Uh, yeah. uh, the Prophet Muhammad used to spend time just to complete complete and to observe the nature. He was sitting down looking at the mountains, looking at the nature, looking at the flower. And this is recommended us as a Muslim to at least once a week or once in a while to be with ourselves and just to contemplate the nature, contemplate outside. We used to have we have a life, a routine life, coming from work, from university, from anywhere, coming home, and then the next day the same, and then the weekend, it's just time to probably to do the routine also for the weekend. But we need to have some time for ourselves just to contemplate around ourselves. Why? It's because it will teach us how important and how difficult was the creation the complexity of the nature. It's not to wait for death, it's to work in this life. It's, there is a purpose or something that you see the Creator now on earth. And this is important. I always <coughs> praise an hadith for, from Imam Ali alayhi salam. <laughs> that was saying we can live under the leadership of unbelievers, but we cannot live under the leadership of oppression. And when I thought about this hadith, I said, Subhanallah, look how nice and how important is this hadith teaching us that the most important thing is to live in a place that it's thinking about the welfare and the well-being of the inhabitant. We shouldn't just base everything on the dogmas or s slogans of a, of a, s a leader or whatever. We need to live in a place that you feel freedom in order to be able to develop this inner spirituality. That is why Many people that I met coming from countries, so-called Muslim countries, and came to Canada 
just an example. And they said, Subhanallah, look at the time I'm spending just to live in a, such beautiful place that I am able to spend more time to and, and learn and comprehend my religion while I was back in my country. I don't want to give you a very dirty picture, it's just to emphasize of the importance to spend time and to have a kind of freedom of schedule, freedom in a, cult, in, in a country to be able to follow religion plentifully, freely especially, and to not divorce with this word, not to think that one now I need to just wait for my death and just pray for Malik al Maud to take my soul. No, Islam is not um, a worship of death. It's not a religion of sadness and we have to cry all the time just because we're scared of death. No, it's a religion of love, of compassion, of sincerity. Helping human beings to have a good life in this life. I need to emphasize that. Yesterday when I spoke about death, I didn't mean that our life is all based to wait death. It was just to make understand that death is coming for everyone. It can be in one minute or it can be in hundred years. But we have to be ready to face this. Meanwhile, you wait to to meet death, we have to build this, our life, in a proper way, following the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also to live in a way that the dignity as a Muslim will not be under questions. This is how it is. And when I said the hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam, that it's better to live under the leadership of an unbeliever than, uh, than to live under the leadership. This is a very famous hadith. Uh, even the, the Sunni and Bakris uh, have the same hadith. Uh, or um, living under the leadership of oppressors, but they're using a slogan of Islam. This is to emphasize that the earth is huge and is vast. And we have to live freely our religion anywhere that we feel that religion is not freely practicable. Practicable, we need to change and try, try to find a solution to be able to live our religion. And to live the religion is nothing. We don't ask anything special. We need just a place to be, as a dignity, to pray, to learn, to have a family to learn how to love Allah Taala and the creation. This is how we, was, we, we ask as a Shia. And the Shia doesn't need to, it's not a religion or retaliation of violence, of war, of many things that some, maybe some sect or maybe some dogmatic um, religion or like that, I, I doubt, I don't know. But as, I, as far as I know, according to all the books we have in the Hawza, all the books we have in the Shia and the Ahlul Bayt, we always promote love, peace and sincerity. Always, by using our reason and using our faith and love. This is the only thing. And any country who use the banner of Sayyid al-Shuhada to do violence, to desecrate the holiness of Islam for their own politics, they are evil, they are Yazid. They are Yazid by using the picture of Shia. And this is not acceptable whatsoever. So just to emphasize that life is very important. Life is sacred. It's under no circumstances we have the right to take out the life of someone. There is no commit suicide is haram. Killing someone is haram. Killing an animal without any purpose is haram. Even 
to destroy trees. We cannot just do whatever we want. He had been created for a purpose, and we need to respect the Creator who did this work. We're not here to judge or to do whatever we want. There is a judge which is Allah SWT. That's it. We are no one. We are, we are exactly that we can imagine the ants you see in the ground on the eyes of Allah SWT. So it's no one can judge anyone. In the Quran, we have an ayah. لا تقتلوا نفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق. Do not kill a single soul, a single human being, a single creation. This is a hope from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then he says إلا بالحق. It means unless you have a permission to do so from the masumin from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from an obvious reason. But it shows how important is life. It shows that we have to build the society. All the lectures I did since day one or night one was all based on how to have a good life, to raise family, to have children, and to earn money in order to have a better life and also to be educated enough to understand and comprehend the purpose of life in order to be ready when we need to meet the Ahlul Bayt. So we have also something really important that I was amazed, it was a group of um, Canadian researchers, um, I think it was in McGill University in Montreal, and um, they, were going comp they were doing comparison between the religious people and non-religious, and they took a group of religious, among them was the Shia. And they were comparing about the type of life they have, depressions, um, mental sickness, um, physical health, there was a list of things that they were doing comparison between the non-religious, the extremist non-religious, and, uh, I don't know, the Christians uh, and other um, faith, including the Shia. I was amazed that this group of uh, professors, and none of them were Shia, by the way, uh, they were <coughs> result of the analyze was the religious, had a better life. They found themselves more at ease in life. They had always hope. Any uh, problems, they will return to their own faith, comparing to the non-religious who use drugs, alcohol, commit suicide, ending up sometime in a psychiatric hospital with uh, high uh, medications. So it shows religion is a medication. It's something. There is something someone who is religious. And when they was doing more for the Shia, they realized the one who is the more healthy is the Shia. Why? It's because Shia has a meaning. He has something else. We cry for anything Allah likes. We are happy for anything Allah wants. This is how a religion is the most complete religion on earth. There is no religion like the Shiism. We don't need to complete our religion with another religion. Some people do a religion a la carte. For example, they choose one faith. Because there is something missing in that faith, they go to choose another faith to complete. For example, in France, for some Catholic families, they complete their faith with Hinduism, because they miss some spirituality, and vice versa, and other faiths. But we don't need to do that. It's the most complete one. It's the one that God sent it to us, especially, especially for the youth to be serious in religion. Will give them this blessing in their eyes, this light in their heart, this power in their tongue. 
and it will be the model for the society. Alhamdulillah that everyone <coughs> thinking about education and are educated and indeed religion is the religion of education and science and that is why that we have many hadith especially I speak to the youngster that if you want to do an act of worship one, one of the act of worship is to study regardless the subject and to study in a way that you want to reach the expertise of that science any science you, we choose at the end of that science we reach how to better feel and know Allah SWT. but indeed as a Hausa student I always say I am proud to be just a Hausa student I just said just because for many it says well to be a, a Talabe or a Hausa student it's nothing why well, you want to spend your time to study the same subject but I think this is something I need to encourage especially the youth to spend at least one hour a week five hours a week any minute they can they have a spare time instead of watching a movie or watching a football or soccer game they can have five minutes a day to have one page of a house of books for example Usul al-Fiqh al-Muzaffar they can try the commentary of Lu'ma or many other subjects they want to learn about akhlaq, about the commentary of the Quran and at the uh, previous time, maybe a century ago even non-religious used to know subject from the Hawza but now the Hawza becomes something very limited that only certain type of people study the Hawza but this is not good, it's open for everyone I was amazed when a couple of years ago I was in Qom, now even a little bit more, because I was looking for um, to move to another flat, and I went to a, a place that a uh, letting agent. He was just letting you know flats, and I was I needed to move um, because I changed my my school in Qom, and um, the one who was renting, I was seeing him with a book. And he said, what do you read? He said, I'm reading Rasail, it's one book of the Hawza on level 9, level 8. I said, subhanAllah, you, you're reading this? He said, yeah. You know, I don't, when I don't have customer, I just read all of them. And the end of the week, I see uh, an alim, and I will ask him a question. And this uh, person, I think, he was reaching the, uh, the level of ishtihad, mashallah, it's like, he said, I don't have that much uh, customers, so it's a good time to be mushtahid, inshallah. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's just a, an example that it's open for everyone. We need to know our, our deen. We shouldn't just be satisfied about listening to lectures. Or sometimes we, we need to be careful also what the people say on, on the lectures. Uh, if they don't um, <coughs> manipulate uh, some subject. So... That's what I wanted just to say briefly about the importance of building uh, a good life and I don't want to take a lot of our time today because I think it's a special night of uh, the night of Abul uh, Fazl Abbas and um, just uh, it was a kind of reply for uh, the subject I had yesterday about death and inshallah everyone will enjoy to live uh, with dignity, with faith, with love of the Ahlul Bayt, to be educated, to have a good life, to be able to be strong enough financially to help others, to help the one who cannot um, have a good life. We have many Shia who are oppressed and they don't have money even to buy sim simple uh, clothing or food. So that's the reason we need to uh, be, uh, to work as much as possible to be able to help others. Salaam alaikum Muhammad wa alaikum Muhammad. Just to briefly uh, speak about um, the journey of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. 
that, um, as I said, he's traveling 14 places, and each place he sits on the town, uh, he goes, uh, and there, um, there is a message, or there is uh, something happen. On the fifth place is the town of Zabala. This town, basically, he met two tribes, and those two tribes, they speak to them, and he heard about the news of the martyrdom of Muslim al al <coughs> And he was very, very sad. That was the moment that he realized that the message he wants to carry is very heavy because he is really going towards Kuf people who lead in Kufr and he needs to carry this light even the killing anyone they can see without any mercy in their heart and when Imam Hussain salam heard this news he went towards the daughter of Muslim Ibn Aqil she was four years old and he was giving her hearings putting her on his lip, his lap, and he was giving her the, the hearing. And she was saying, why are you giving me a present? I said, this is a present for you. And then she said, does it mean I am orphan now? <laughs> and Imam Hussein just, just said that, inshallah, your father is in a good place now. And then Imam Hussein alayhi salam went with the caravan to the sixth place in the Batn al Aqiq. This is where a tribe from Akrama came to him and was explaining about how people in Kufa were again. He was explaining that now Yazid and the army of Yazid doesn't let anyone to move from Kufa. Nobody is allowed to go in or out. Kufa is surrounded. You shouldn't go there. But still Imam Hussain alayhi salam was planning to go to the next city towards Kufa. And he went to Surat, that's the seventh place. I'm going a little bit faster today because Unfortunately, we are approaching Ashura. I say unfortunately for two reasons. One is because just to remember what happened during Ashura, it's like we are there. We are reaching the moment that we are losing our Sayyid al Shuhada. And the second reason is this is the last opportunities to reform ourselves to become a different person. We don't have that much days left. And this is the only time that we need now to work on ourselves. So in the town of Surat, Imam Hussein alayhi salam was saying to his companion and family to get as much as possible water because he knew that's what will happen. So they were collecting inside the sheepskins a lot of amount of water every in a lot of sheep's skins. And then he went to the eighth place, which is the last place I will speak about today, which is Sharah the Valley of Sharah. And then a companion came to him and said, There is a storm. So it's not possible to see the other side. But the army of Yazid are coming towards you. And this is a danger. You have to be ready to confront them. And this is the end of the eighth place. Inshallah, we'll uh, speak a little bit, do a small massive about Hazrat Abbas. Inshallah, today we'll have the alam 
and the program after mine. As you know, Hazrat Abbas was 36 years old, very handsome man. He used to be called the moon, the moon of Ha, the son of Ha Hashem. In Arabic, Qamar means someone who is enlightened because he's full of, full of light. He's beautiful because of his faith coming out of his heart. And this is the time that before the Ashura and the day of Ashura, the fights were intense after the prayer of the Dhuhr. And the daughter of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, under the name of Sakina, she was very thirsty. She wanted to have some water. And she asked to someone she loved the most, her Amu, her uncle, Amu Abbas. And she was asking to her uncle, uncle, can I have some water, please? And if, indeed, Hazrat Abbas, Al Amdar, the Qamar Bani Hashem, was, he was very proud and happy to please Sakina bint al Hussein. At the same time, Azrat Abbas was very sad, very angry to see that Azrat Qasim was killed really badly by Yazid. But indeed, they just wanted to save Islam, to save the message of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bibi Sakina bint al Hussein said, Amu Abbas, my uncle Abbas, Al Atash, I am thirsty. Please give me some drop of water. And Abbas had the permission to get some water from Hussein alayhi salam. And Imam Hussein said, Ya Abbas, kiss me, just tell me goodbye before you leave. And Abbas went towards the river of Furat. He went on the horse and called the Eqab. The name of the horse was Eagle. You know why they call it the Eagle? Because that was the horse of Prophet Muhammad and Imam Ali alayhi salam. He went towards the river of the Furat. And Hussein just said, Abbas, Imam Hussein said, Ya Abbas, I want to ask you something. Abbas said, Please tell me, my beloved brother, what do you need from me? And Hussein alayhi salam said, I want a gift from you. Can you give me your sword? And Abbas gave his own sword to Hussein alayhi salam. He went with the alam and went and reached the river of Furat. When he was in front of the river of the Furat, he, he spoke with the water. He wanted to drink this water. And he said, Oh, water of Furat, my lips can welcome you only after that Sakina will drink this water. And he just put the water inside the, the mashk and he wanted to bring it back to give it to Sakina. And Omar ibn Sa'ad, when he saw Al Abbas coming towards the tent with the water, he said, You have to stop him. And he said to the army, Al Omar ibn Sa'ad said to the army, You have to stop Al Abbas. And the army came towards Abbas and wanted to kill him. But Abbas was very strong. He didn't want to let the army to kill him. So the army did something else. He said, we have to stop him to bring the water. So he cut one arm and Abbas wanted to continue. And then the second arm fell down in the ground. Yeah. Allah, they cut the hands of Abbas, he's on the horse 
and he wanted to keep this water under his teeth and wanted to bring it but the army wasn't satisfied it was saying it's not enough we have to stop we don't want the water going under the tent and Sankina was saying to her father oh Hussein I'm thirsty I want some drop of water and Sakina was waiting for Abbas she saw from far the alam of Abbas but she didn't know what happened and the arms were on the, fl on the floor and Abbas was just thinking to bring the water so what happened is that Abbas went and tried to come towards the tent but the army destroyed Dimashk so the water was dropping down in the desert of Karbala there is no more water and he went and he fell down in the ground and Hussein went towards him and he said what happened Abbas where are your arm what happened to you you have blood everywhere and he had one of the eyes was the arrow went on the right eyes he was full of blood the other part of the face was full of blood and he couldn't see he said I want to ask you something Ya Hussein could you clean please the blood on, the, on my face I just wanted to see you before I leave and Hussein said sure my brother I love you you are my, my beloved brother and Abbas was out of the blood and Hussein was cleaning the face and he said I wanted only one thing else to tell you Ya Hussein please do not bring my body to Sakina I don't want her to see how I am I don't want to see her I don't have any harm I am full of blood and it just you tell her that I went towards the grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam, and he left the world and Hussein was kissing the face of Abbas he said wallahi they don't know what they are doing they are fighting with Allah the curse of Allah will be upon them in a way that the angels the jazz the, all the creations was crying for Hussein cries also for Abbas inna lillahi inna ilahi rajihun wa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam salam akbar muhammad wa ali muhammad we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah to give us more faith stronger belief to be the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt really deeply. We ask Allah, anyone who has a problem, a health problem, financial problem, any type of problem, the Haqq Abu Fazl, we ask inshallah to be resolved. We have many ulama who will tell you that someone asked to Abbas alayhi salam to try to get help from him. Someone was sick, but the person didn't heal. And he said to Abbas that the person didn't heal. He wasn't healed. I will complain to your father if that person is not healed. And Abbas himself healed that person. So it's the best time for now to ask Allah SWT for any problem we have. Wallahi, I said last time. That before the day of Ashura, we will have the answer, inshallah, from Azad Abu Faz. Barabi <laughs> <laughs> Assalatu wa salam ala rasulih al kareem wa ala alihi al-tayyabin al-tawhirin al-ma'asumin al-mazlumin salwaab. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. 
مسلسل آپ کی خدمت میں ولایت کے حوالے سے چند گزارشات عرض کرتا رہا ہوں اسی سلسلے میں آج میں نے سور احزاب کی آیت آپ کے سامنے تلاوت کرنے کا شرف حاصل کیا جس میں اللہ تبارک تعالی ارشاد فرماتے ہیں کہ اللہ اور اس کے ملائک نبی پہ درود بھیجتے ہیں یا یو اللہ دین آمنو اب دو حکم ہیں سلو علیہ و تسلم و سلم و تسلیمہ یعنی دو باتیں ہیں اور یہ ایسی آیت ہے جو یوں کہا جائے کہ بھوڑا ہو جوان ہو بچہ ہو جب بھی پڑھی جاتی ہے تو دل سے سلوات نکلتی ہے یعنی ادھر سے آپ نے آیت پڑھنا شروع کی ادھر سے تیار ہو گئے درود پڑھنے کے لیے لیکن یہ ایک حکم ہے جس کی بجاوری کی جاتی ہے یعنی سلو علیہ اور جو دوسرا حکم ہے وہ حقیقتاً ولایت کے زمرے میں آتا ہے وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا یہ عمل کی بات ہے جب یعنی ان کا حکم مانو اور سر تسلیم کر خم کرو اور کیونکہ پہلے حکم میں جو ہے سلو علیہ وہ تو خود بھی شامل ہیں اللہ بھی شامل ہے ملائکہ بھی شامل ہے لیکن دوسرے میں ہم یعنی جو مخاطب ہے یا ایوہ اللہ دین آمنو یعنی اس طرح سے حکم کی بجا آوری کرو جیسے سورہ نساء میں حکم ہوا اللہ کہتا ہے تیرے رب کی قسم یہ مومن نہیں ہیں نہیں ہو سکتے جب تک تجھے اپنے معاملات میں حاکم نہ مانے اور جب تم فیصلہ آپ فیصلہ کریں تو اس کو یعنی بغیر کسی ہچ کھچاٹ کے تسلیم کریں تو یہ مومن ہیں ورنہ مومن نہیں ہیں تو مومن کے لیے یعنی ولایت کی بات یہ ہے ایک حصہ تو یہ ہے کہ آپ محبت کرتے ہیں لیکن ولایت کے جو زمرے میں بات آتی ہے وہ ہے عمل یعنی جو کہا جائے وہ مانا جائے جیسے آپ نے دیکھا نا مثالیں دی کل کہ پتھر گواہی دے رہا ہے پانی پہ سے مولا کا نام لے کے گزرا جا سکتا ہے اور اشارہ کیا تو درخت چل کے آ سکتا ہے تو یہ کیا ہے جو ولایت یعنی یہ نہیں ہے کہ مان لیا تو بہرہ ہے لیکن نہیں جب علی کا نام لیا گیا تو اس نام لینے والے کے لیے راہ بن گیا پانی اور جب پتھر کو حکم ہوا تو اس نے گواہی دے دی تو یہی بات ہے کہ جب مومن کو کہا جائے تو اپنا کردار یعنی عمل کے ساتھ اس طرح سے پیش کرے کہ وہ سلم و تسلیمہ کے زمرے میں آئے اور ایسا نہ ہو کہ کبھی یوں ہو کہ دل میں تو محبت علی کی ہو لیکن کردار اس کے دشمنوں والا ہو ہوتا ہے جب انسان اس لیے تو مولا نے فرمایا نا کہ وہ ہمارا شیعہ نہیں ہے جو اللہ سے خوف نہ کھائے یعنی جو اللہ سے خوف نہیں کھاتا یعنی تقوی اختیار نہیں کرتا وہ ہمارا شیعہ نہیں ہے تو ایسے اللہ نے بھی کہا کہ تیرے رب کی قسم یہ مومن نہیں ہے جب تک کہ تمہیں حاکم نہ مانے تو بات وہی آتی ہے اور اگر یہی بات یعنی دیکھنا چاہیں تو حضرت عباس مکمل تصویر ہے ولایت کی یعنی سلم و تسلیمہ کی مکمل تصویر ہے کہیں بھی آپ کو جب دیکھا دیکھیں جب حضرت عباس کو کچھ کہا گیا 
पलट के जवाब नहीं दिया पलट के उस पर आर्ग्यूमेंट नहीं किया जो कहा गया उसको सरे तस्लीम करके अमल कर लिया और यही हजरत अब्बास जिसको बाबल हवाज कहा जाता है अल्लाह ऐसे किसी को बाबल हवाज नहीं बनाता ये भी देखा जाए कि आखिर क्या वजह थी कि हजरत अब्बास को बाबल हवाज का दर्जा दिया गया हम देखते हैं तारीख में यही मिलता है कि ये वही शख्सियत हैं जिसके जिसके लिए हजरत अली अलीसलाम नमाज तहजद में दुआ मांगते थे ऐ मेरे अल्लाह ऐसा मुझे बेटा अता कर जो मेरी तरफ से करबला में हुसैन की इस तरह से हिफाजत करे जिस तरह मैं रसूल की करता रहा हूं और जब हजरत अब्बास इस दुनिया में आते हैं तो मौला मस्जिद में है इतला दी जाती है कि घर में बेटा पैदा हुआ है जब मौला सजदा शुक्र दे के आते हैं तो देखते हैं कि हजरत अब्दुल फजल अब्बास पैदा हो चुके हैं हाथों में लेके देखते हैं कि बेशक ऐसा ही है जैसे मैंने मांगा था फिर देख के कहते हैं ए उमल बनीन आप घबराई घबराई क्यों लग रही हैं अल्लाह ने तुझे बेटा अता किया है कहा कि मैं वही जवाब दिया जो जनाब फातवा बिलते असद ने अली अलीसलाम के विलादत के वक्त रसूल पाक को दिया था कि मौला मैं इसलिए परेशान हूं कि जब से पैदा हुआ है आंखें नहीं खोली कहा कि घबराओ नहीं कहा कि हुसैन को बुलाओ और जब हुसैन आए तो मौला ने हजरत अब्बास को मौला हुसैन के हाथों में दे दिया जब मौला के हाथों पे आए ना हजरत अब्बास हजरत अब्बास ने आंखें खोली और पहली जियारत की और इसीलिए तो कहा था ना आखिर वक्त में मौला जब मैं शहादत के बाद कहा था ना कि मैंने जब दुनिया में आया था तो पहले आपकी जियारत की थी अब जब मैं इस दुनिया से जा रहा हूं मेरी आंखों में खून है मेरी आंखों का खून साफ करें मैं आखिरी आपकी जियारत करना चाहता हूं और हजरत अब्बास ने यू ही दोनों नन्हे नन्हे हाथ बुलंद किए ऐसे जैसे कह रहे हो मौला ये मेरे हाथों का अभी से नजराना कबूल कर ले और जब जनाब जैनब ने सुना ना बाबा के मुंह से कि अब्बास इसका नाम रखता हूं मैं क्योंकि इससे पहले हजरत मोहम्मद हनफिया भी पैदा हो चुके थे लेकिन हजरत यानी अब्बास पहले नाम सुना जब जनाब सैदा जैनब सलाम ने सुना ना कि अब्बास पैदा हुए हैं तो आई बाबा ये अब्बास है हाँ बेटा ये अब्बास है कहा कि बाबा मुझे दे दे जब ये अब्बास है तो मुझे दे दे और झुक के भाई के कानों में कुछ कहा तो मौला ने कहा सैनब बेटे क्या कह रही हो भाई को कहा के अभी तो छोटा है कहीं आप बातें कर लीजिएगा कहा के नहीं बाबा मुझे माँ ने वसीयत की थी गुजरते वक्त जनाब फातमा तो जहरा सलाम आलिया ने जैनब बेटा जब अब्बास पैदा हो तो मेरी तरफ से सलाम कह देना कि माँ जहरा तुम्हें सलाम कह दी और हजरत अब्बास देखें जब पैदा होता है दुआ है कि करबला के लिए बड़ा होता है तो मां कहती है कि तू करबला के लिए मांगा गया है भाई बहन कहते हैं और हजरत अब्बास के जहन में एक ही तमन्ना जन्म लेती है एक ही मुराद है उसके जहन में एक ही हसरत है कि मैंने मेरा हदफ यह है कि करबला में मैं हुसैन की उनसरत मदद के लिए पैदा किया गया हूं और वही ये हसरत थी और जो भी जंग के यानी हर्ब के फनून सीखे और उसको वहीं पे आजमाऊंगा और मैं मौला की हिफाजत करूंगा ये हसरत थी और जब मैदान करबला में वक्त आया तो इसी को यानी हजरत अब्बास को ही तलवार इस्तेमाल न करने दी गई और रोक दिया गया जंग से यानी इस तरह से यानी यानी जो वो 
पूरी जिंदगी जैसे आपने सुना ना चौंतीस या छत्तीस साल की उम्र थी यही हसरत थी और वही हसरत जब इमाम हुसैन सलाम ने कहा ना कि ना भैया आपने जिहाद नहीं करना आपने तलवार नहीं उठानी तो पलट के ये नहीं कहा मेरे तो जिंदगी का मकसद ये ही और मुझे ही रोका जाता है नहीं विलायत के आगे सरे तस्लीम खम किया जब अल्लाह ने ये देखा ना कि अपनी पूरी जो जिंदगी की मुराद थी हसरत थी तमन्ना थी वो यानी विलायत के आगे सरे तस्लीम खर खम कर दिया तो उस वक्त कहा कि अब तूने अपनी हसरत विलायत के लिए और मेरे लिए दबा दी है तो मैं भी वायदा करता हूं ता कयामत जब भी तेरे नाम से कोई दुआ मांगेगा उसकी दुआ खाली नहीं जाएगी और तू और हजरत अब्बा दसवीं की रात अब अपनी तलवार को सेकल कर रहे हैं और इतने में जनाब सैदा जैनब सलाम आती हैं तो जनाब अब्बास बड़े एहतराम के साथ इस उठ खड़े होते हैं कहती हैं आकाश मुझे बुला लिया होता कहा कि भैया बात यह है कि सब बीबिया मुझे कह रही हैं कि कल का दिन ऐसा का है तो हमारे पर्दों का क्या होगा हमारे हिजाब का क्या होगा तो इसलिए मैं आपके पास आई हूं तो कहने लगा आप घबराइए नहीं जब तक आपका ये गुलाम जिंदा है आपके पर्दे सलामत है तो जनाब सैयद आती हैं कि आओ भर जाइयो आओ बहनों मैं वायदा करती हूं कि तुम्हारे पर्दे सलामत रहेंगे और जब दसवीं का दिन चढ़ता है और यारो अनसार कुर्बान होते हैं और बनु हाशिम की बारी आती है तो हर बार हजरत अब्बास कहते हैं मौला मुझे जंग की इजाजत दे दे तो इमाम हुसैन कहते हैं भाई आप तो मेरे लश्कर के सिपाह सालार है आपको पता है सिपाह सालार बीच में या शुरू में नहीं जाता मौला खामोश हो जाते हैं और आखिर में जब जवाना ने बन हाशिम शहीद हो जाते हैं मौला आके फिर कहते हैं आका अब तो इजाजत दे दे कहता है मौला मेरे भाई तू तो मेरे लश्कर का सिपाह सालार है तो हसरत से कहते हैं मेरे मेरे आका वो लश्कर ही कहा रहा जिसका मैं सिपा साल <laughs> और इतने में हजरत अब्बास खैमे की तरफ आते हैं तो जनाब शकीना कई बच्चों को लेके हाथ में खाली जाम लेके अलातश 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 का नारा बुलंद करके आती हैं और जब हजरत अब्बास को देखती हैं कहती हैं चाचा आप भी हो और हम प्यासे भी हो आप कुछ पानी का बंदोबस्त करें अब हजरत अब्बास ने देखा ना कि ये मौकाशा है और जनाब सैयद सकीना को लेके और इमाम हुसैन के पास आते हैं जब मौला हुसैन ने देखा समझ गए कहा कि, कि मेरे भैया अब ऐसा करें कि आप ये मरहूम जेदी साहब के अल्फाज है कि मौला ने कहा कि आप पानी तक पहुंच जाए <laughs> अब उसकी तहकीक थी कहते अगर कहता ना कि पानी लेके आओ तो जरूर खैमे तक आते कहा कि पानी तक पहुंच जाओ और हजरत अब्बास जब चले हैं मैदान की तरफ तो इस तरह से लश्कर अशकिया को चीरते हुए फ्राद तक पहुंचे हैं कि पानी को लेके देख के कहते हैं कि अब बताओ पानी तुम्हारे कब्जे में है या हमारे कब्जे और हजरत अब्बास ने अपने घोड़े को कहा कि घोड़ा पानी पी ले अब ये देखे यहां वो उकाब जिसकी बात की गई अभी उकाब ने अपनी जुबान बेजबानी में कहा मेरा सरदार प्यासा है मैं कैसे पानी पीऊ उकाब ने भी पानी नहीं पिया मौला ने मश्क भरी और जब चलने लगे ना तो अब उमर इबन साद ने कहा कि ऐसा कुछ करो कि हजरत अब्बास पानी लेके खयाम तक ना पहुंचे जब हजरत अब्बास पानी लेके आगे बढ़ते हैं तो बीबियों बीबिया खयाम में देख रही हैं कि अलम 
बुलंद है सबको हौसला है एक बार अलम झूम गया सीधे हाथ की तरफ और जब बाजू मौला का कट गया तो दाएं हाथ में बाएं हाथ में अलम को पकड़ा और जब बाया हाथ कलम हुआ तो अलम जमीन पर आया और उस वक्त हजरत अब्बास मश के तस्मे मुंह में डाल के खेमे की तरफ घोड़े को दौड़ा रहे हैं तो उमर इब्ने साद हुरमला को कहता है हुरमला तू कुछ कर कि इस तरह से कि पानी खयाम तक न पहुंचे तो अब देखे दुश्मन जैसा भी है लेकिन वो बेअल बेवकूफ नहीं है और हुरमला ने देखा कि ये ऐसा नौजवान क्या चीज है जो लेके जा रहा है एक बाजू कट गया फिर भी नहीं रुकता दूसरा बाजू कट गया फिर भी नहीं रुकता तो इसने देखा कि कोई चीज है जो उसने अपने सीने से लपटाई हुई है तो अब इसने हजरत अब्बास का निशाना नहीं लिया उसने मश्क का निशाना लिया जब तीर मश्क में लगा और पानी बह गया आप खुदा आपको जवारी नसीब करे होकर भी आए होंगे मैदान करबला में वो जगह भी है जहां पे हजरत अब्बास की मश्क को तीर लगा उस वक्त हजरत अब्बास का रुख खयाम की तरफ था ना जब पानी बह गया हजरत अब्बास ने खयाम की तरफ से रुख मोड़ के ये लश्कर की तरफ रुख किया और उस वक्त इतने तीर बरसाए गए कि हजरत अब्बास घोड़े से जमीन से जमीन पर आ गए और आवाज दी असलाम अब अब्दुल्ला और मौला वहां से चले और मौला ने ये जुमला कहा अब्बास तू नहीं गया मेरी कमर टूट गई अब्बास तू नहीं गया मेरी कबर टूट गई और ये अब्बास का वजूद ही तो था तो कहते हैं ना अली सब का मुश्किल कुशा है लेकिन अहलबेद का मुश्किल कुशा अब्बास था जब तक अब्बास जिंदा रहा किसी को कोई खतरा नहीं था जब अब्बास गुजर गए तो हजरत अब्बास का अलम जब लेके मौला खयाम की तरफ आता है तो खाली मश्क और अलम जब लेके आते हैं तो देखते ही कई बच्चे इस हादसे में उस वक्त अल्लाह को प्यारे हो जाते हैं और जनाब सैयद बीबियों को बुला के कहती है आओ रुबाब मैं कुरसो अब मेरा वायदा नहीं रहा मैं अपना वायदा वापस ले रही हूँ क्योंकि गाजी का अब्बास का अलम वापस आ गया लेकिन अलमदार वापस नहीं आया अलम हजरत अब्बास खुद वापस नहीं आए लेकिन उसका अलम वापस आ गया लानतुल्ला कौमी मातम हुसैन Yeah, I'm saying.